Hi everybody, I'm Laura from Lawrence Branch, and today I'm going to show you the background for how I made this craft. Um, Mexican tin art, or ojalata, or lamina. And so I read a little bit about how to do it, and it's very easy. You're going to need to save your recycle um, takeout, pan, uh, takeout pans, or if you have a pie pan, or even if you have a larger cookie sheet shaped um, tin. And something to cut with. I have my garden shears. Regular scissors will work fine. You need something to etch with, and you could use a letter opener or a nail. And if you're gonna have the young ones do it, I suggest that the adults prep this, and then you wanna tape it down after you cut so that the kids don't cut themselves. And this is uh, another related craft, and I'm gonna show you the background on all the different ways that you could do this craft. And so you saw all the steps of what I did. Your first step is going to be to decide on what shape you want. I started with something that would be pie shaped and I cut slits and then I flattened it. And then after that, you're going to find a nice sturdy surface to work on that's scratch proof. So I got out a cutting board after you cut out your design, you want to tape it down, and you're going to work on your main side of the plate. You're going to do your scratching on that, and as I said, different ones worked different ways. The, the pie pan that I worked on, I think for this one, um, reacted a little bit differently than these takeout pans. Um, and the way you can tell that is after you're done etching your pattern, you look on the back, you can see how 
they're slightly, they're raised a little bit differently on, on both of these, but they both worked. And so as I said, um, in order to get some inspiration for your designs, um, you wanna look online, type in uh, Mexican folk art, Mexican doodles, anything that you want. And you see that you'll get tons of ideas. And what I will say is for my purposes, the curves were a little harder for me. It was easier to do triangles and angular shapes. The circles take a little bit more practice. So you might wanna have a piece set aside for practicing. And it's almost like creating your own paint by number. You're making little shapes and then you're coloring them in. And I used acrylic paint. And so I filled these all in and I had a bunch of different paint brushes, some of them very small. If you want the children to do it and you want it to be done a little more quickly, you could use permanent uh, markers, Sharpies. And the only thing on this that I did with a Sharpie was the black. And honestly, I, I really liked the effect of the paint a little bit better, but you could, you could do it with Sharpies. And I did these all at the same time. I didn't really wait for anything to dry unless I was putting a second coat or an accent. So you could sit there and do it all at once or you could do it as you have time. After you have um, done the etching, that's when you're going to turn it over. I should have said that first. After you etch your piece, you're turning it over to the opposite side and that's what you're painting on. So I etched on this side, flipped it over, and I painted on this side. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with these. They make great decorations. I can hang them in my garden. I definitely wanna make a few more of these because they were so much fun and so satisfying. So again, if you're going to do it with the younger kids, make sure that you think about safety and tape it down and the adults could do the part where you wanna make sure nobody gets cut. This was a lot of fun. I suggest that you do it. It's, um, it's easy to do and very colorful. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.